going to be installing the Lock and Load Pro system from Risk Racing. I've heard great things about this system. Uh, I'm really excited to get it installed into the trailer. It looks like a very straightforward install. However, I've got three of these for my bikes and my kids. So we're gonna have to spend a bit more time in spacing them and getting them placed exactly where they wanna be. But once we've done that, it looks like a straightforward system of drilling through those holes and fastening the nut underneath the trailer and then lock and load ready to race. We've epoxied the floor. I'm gonna do a walkthrough of this trailer a little bit later to show you all the things that we've done. But for this video, I wanna show you, we're gonna be hopefully setting up one system about here, another one on the other side, and then one right in the center. So we'll have one, two, three bikes. Hoping that works, hoping that this spacing uh, will make it a nice symmetrical mount. We may have to offset them, but let's get going and see what happens. Quick unboxing before we get to the install. This is how the boxes came from Rocky Mountain ATV. And when you open it up, you've got the risk box. You see this slide? You see this sleeve just comes right off like this. All right, so that sleeve slides off. Open the box like this. And let's see what we got here. There we go. The lock and load pro system. Right here, you can see some hardware falling around. So be careful with that. And this here, there's one. There's two. Those are some screws. There's the mount. Like so. And then we've got our bolt systems in here. Like always, I think it's a good idea to throw all the hardware in a magnetic tray so we don't lose anything. These here are from the other system. We'll just throw all theirs, throw all them in there. And there we go. Good to go. You can see here, this is the main hardware. Pretty straightforward as to how this is gonna work. You can see it just slides in and do that. Slides in like so. Same with the other side. And then you would tighten those down. Here, you've got this ratcheting system. So when you pop this up, that's gonna unlock. Fire those up, and then when you lock them back down, two, you're gonna have a ratcheting system to hold your bike down. All right, let's get them installed. So with all things, it's important to read the instructions. Uh, here's the instructions here. If you wanna pause the video to see what it is that they want you to do, you can do that now. This is page one. And then we've got page two. As you can see, for this particular Pro model, these are the bike ranges, the sizes, 85 to 450 cc or 690 enduro. Um, caution about never using the system to load a bike that it wasn't intended for. So just make sure that you're choosing between the Lock and Load Pro or the mini version, which would be for smaller bikes. So here they are, all lined up, ready to be installed. I place them now where in theory, I want them to be. Whether this is gonna work is only going to be known once I get my dirt bikes in here and see if I'm gonna have enough space. But uh, this is how I would like my dirt bikes to be mounted. And then that way I've got a nice one in the center and I can remove, uh, see these are quite easy to remove. If you don't want them there, which would just leave that uh, mounting system there. If I'm taking one bike or if I'm taking three, I can just adapt as I need to. So yeah, let's see if this, uh, get some dirt bikes in here and see how they're all gonna fit. So one thing I can't emphasize enough is how important it is to actually get your bikes in here and make sure that they're where you wanna be because you may be surprised how far back foot pegs are set 
or the ultimate positioning of the bike. So for example, you can see on the right, that's where I thought the mount would go, but I didn't realize how far the foot pegs are set back. So this is actually where they both should be going. And I might even bring it back a little bit further still. So get those bikes in. And before you uh, do anything, make sure it's where you want it to be because you don't want to be drilling in your floor any more than you need to. So once you've got them lined up exactly where you want them to be, I mean, there's different ways to do it. One, you could mark uh, each hole that you need to drill. If you're using this on uh, wood, you're supposed to use a wood screws to drill here, 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 and the final ones. What I'm doing is I'm actually just doing a quick pilot hole with a very thin drill bit, uh, very small. I don't remember the size right now, but I'm just firing it down so that that way, when I do the, uh, the screws, the wood screws, it will go in a lot easier and it also is marking where I need this to be. But uh, I think either method would be fine, but this way you're kind of doing two jobs at once. So now I'm using the wood screws that come with uh, the package. There's different types of bolts. These ones here, the black bolts, I believe are for the truck mount. Um, these wood screws are specifically for wood floors, which I have here uh, coated with an epoxy. But what I might do is I might use one of these additional holes, maybe that middle one, and fire through these machine bolts with the nut uh, underneath that just require me climbing under my trailer. That being said, I already did one here and it's really strong as it is. I don't think it's necessary to throw in the additional machine bolt, but if you've got the time, you've got the hardware. All right, let's get this other one in. One quick tip that I'm realizing now is I'm glad that I have the pilot holes drilled. Even with the holes that I did as pilots, I'm noticing that these, because these wood screws are so thick, which is good, but uh, you might end up stripping them. So do a pilot hole, uh, just a small one, and that should really minimize the chance of stripping those there wood screws. I have to say, installing these mounts is so easy. It's really just drilling holes and throwing these uh, wood screws in. Oh, I missed one. But I've got two done in under 10 minutes while I'm filming it and taking breaks for that. So it's lickety split. If you have one of these mounts to load in a trailer, you'll be done in probably 10 minutes total install. Another thing that I really like about the system is how much space it saves. You can fit three bikes in here, no problem. Not only do you have the convenience of the ratchet down system, but they're, these, are, these are quite compact. And as you can see, you just click them down. One, two, in here. Oh, there you go. So now we've got one, two, and a third bike right here if we want. Man, pretty awesome system. I'm loving this. A few more comments before we wrap up. I want to give you a couple quick uh, explanations of the ratcheting system here. As you can see, it clicks underneath the foot peg. As you step on it, it will ratchet down. This at the back here is what is the lock or unlock system to the ratcheting. So right now it's in the lock position. If we pop it up, press down, see it's just got, it'll pop right up and then you can do the same to the other side. You want to ratchet it back down just like that and once you've got it into place of where you need to be, you just take this red knob and tighten down and there you go. Your bike's not going anywhere. So there you have it, everyone. That is the lock and load system from Risk Racing. I'm really happy with this purchase. More time racing, less time loading. Oh.